In this video, I will show how to apply a unit-based segmentation on an ultrasound image stream, how to reconstruct a 3D volume if these images are tracked, and how to use the reconstructed volume in a surgical navigation application. First, make sure you have a recent build of 3D Slicer application. And once you've installed it, open the Extension Manager, search for IGT in Extensions, and make sure these three extensions are installed. The IGS IO, that includes Volume Reconstruction, Slicer IGT for Real-Time Visualization, and Open IGT Link for a situation where you want to connect to real hardware. In addition, search for Parallel Processing extension and install that too. This will allow faster predictions on the images. Other than these extensions, we will need to add the segmentation unit module from source code. So clone the repository from GitHub, slicer igt slash aigt, find this file segmentation unit.py, and add it to slicer by opening the application settings, go to modules tab, and you can drag and drop that Python file in this area for additional module paths. After that, you will need to restart your slicer for the new modu modules to appear. I have already done that, so I can just load the data for this demo. First, I will load an ultrasound scan that was captured before surgery when a localization needle was already placed inside a tumor. The ultrasound images are tracked. And if you replay the ultrasound recording, you will see that the, ult the needle in the tumor appears to be motionless while the ultrasound is moving. That is because we visualize the data here in the needle coordinate system. We have a tracked ultrasound machine producing images and the needle in the tumor. We track the needle and the ultrasound with an electromagnetic position sensor the image is fixed relative to the probe, and we have a tracker that is usually the EM field generator, which transforms everything to the needle coordinate system in our configuration. You can see this reflected in the transform hierarchy in Slicer. The image goes through a series of transforms that end in the coordinate system called needle. To have these transforms in Slicer, you will need to configure your PLUS and uh, get all these transforms. Just check the PLUS application user manual. You will need to go to the PLUS server section and list all these transform names um, to have these uh, sent to Slicer. In my case, these are already recorded in the scene. Now we can switch to the segmentation unit module that performs, that applies the prediction on the images. First, we'll need to select the trained UNET model. This is something that was previously trained on a few thousand images that we have manually contoured. We select the input image as the ultrasound image, and we'll need to create a new volume that will hold the predictions. And we also create a new transform, transform node. This will copy the, all the transforms applied on the image and apply it at the same time when the prediction is populated, the prediction volume, it will apply the matching transform, so the prediction appears at the correct location. Now when we apply the segmentation and start replaying our ultrasound, the predictions are already generated in the background. But we'll need to visualize them. So for that, we will um, overlay the prediction with the ultrasound images in the same view. For them to appear at the same location, we'll have to make sure that they are both transformed, so they are at the correct location. The prediction to needle transform that we've just created contains all the concatenation of all the transforms on the image. We apply um, red instead of gray colors for the prediction to um, stand out from the ultrasound, and we can blend it with the ultrasound image in the 2D view. We also um, need to visualize only the higher end of the spectrum in the prediction um, intensities to only show the places where it's most likely to be tumor. As you can see, the 
FPS value, the frame, frames per second, is quite low. Usually it's under 10 on my computer. Usually ultrasound machines produce over 20 images per second. So if we, if we run the segmentation on the main process, the main Python interpreter of um, Slicer, then they cannot keep up with the ultrasound machine, which will limit our recording rate and um, rendering rate on, on both the 2D and the 3D viewers. So now we will run the predictions on a separate process. And initially you will see that the ultrasound images queued up in, this, in the process will produce a higher frame rate, but then that frame rate will um, hover around the frame rate of the ultrasound imaging when it, it caught up with the image acquisition process. Of course, the images are now not synchronized. The predictions are coming back from a separate process. So it is best to visualize them in a separate view. So now I'm adding the prediction to the green slice and I'm showing the ultrasound image in the um, red view of Slicer and I've, um, I hid the prediction from the ultrasound overlay. As you can see in the 3D view, if you visualize in 3D both the ultrasound image and the prediction, the prediction sometimes lags behind the ultrasound image since it's generated on a separate process. But now we can um, apply live volume reconstruction on these prediction images. We will create a new volume for predictions We'll call it prediction reconstruction. I've already created a region around the scan, so we will populate this new volume in that area. And now that we start volume reconstruction, it is already happening in the background. We just need to visualize it using volume rendering. The MRI preset is what usually I prefer for ultrasound images. And again, increase the visualization threshold so we only show the areas in 3D which are most likely to belong to tumor tissue. So if we let the um, scan run down and um, produce the complete tumor volume, then we can save it. And as the final part of the demo, I'd like to show it how you would apply this information in a surgical navigation module in, in Slicer. Of course, if we design a specific module for the surgical navigation scenario, then this uh, volume would be um, sent to the navigation module automatically. Now I'm loading the trajectories. This is a time series that happened 10 to 15 minutes after the ultrasound scan when the surgeon was already operating on the tumor. You can see that the cutting device is moving. So now we add an additional tool to our configuration and that's the cautery, the surgical cutting device. The tip of the cautery is what we tracked um, using an EM sensor mounted on the cautery. And we add a reference EM sensor on the patient as an anatomical reference and we transform every the, um, object to this coordinate system to show them in an anatomical frame of reference. This coordinate transformation system is shown in the transform hierarchy in Slicer. As you can see, all the objects are eventually transformed in the reference coordinate system. So now that we load the prediction reconstruction that we have saved previously, we just need to enable volume rendering in this scene as well to show it. Increase the threshold a little bit and, um, and you can apply all the volume rendering options, for example, to change the color of the volume to something that stands out more. And finally, we put this reconstructed volume on the needle coordinate system so it is displayed in the correct position and it can be used during operation to navigate the cautery device around the visible tumor prediction. Usually for surgical navigation, it's best to show at least two 3D views from slightly different perspectives so the surgeon has a better depth perception as as they are cutting around um, the tumor.